It was a remote national park, far from the touch of civilization. I'd been working as a forest ranger for years and had thought I'd seen everything wild animal encounters, survivalists, even the occasional eerie silence that comes out of nowhere in the middle of the day. But nothing ever prepared me for this. One evening, I was on my usual night patrol. The forest was alive with the sounds of crickets and rustling leaves, the air heavy with the dense fog that clung to the ground. I had a flashlight and a radio, the static crackling softly every few seconds, but otherwise, I was alone, or so I thought. About halfway through my route, my radio let out a harsh burst of static. Then, a voice broke through, whispering my name, John, John. My blood ran cold. I pressed the button to respond, but only static followed. That wasn't the oddest part, though. No one should have known where I was, and no one else was on duty that night. I shook it off, assuming it was just a glitch or someone messing with me. But as I continued, the air seemed to grow heavier, almost suffocating. Trees loomed around me like twisted shadows, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. Then. I saw it. At the edge of the path, standing still in the fog, was a figure. It was dressed in an old ranger uniform, the fabric faded and torn, but its face its face was nothing but a hollow void, an endless dark that seemed to swallow the light from my flashlight. The figure raised a hand, beckoning me forward. I froze, heart pounding, feeling trapped in some horrific nightmare. Slowly, I took a step back, and then another. My flashlight flickered and the figure disappeared into the fog, but I could still feel it, lurking just beyond my sight, watching. I turned and ran, tearing through the forest, branches clawing at me as I stumbled along the uneven ground. When I reached the ranger station, I locked myself inside, gasping for breath, and called for backup, but when they arrived, there was no sign of anyone, no tracks, no disturbances, just the echoing silence of the night. I transferred out of that park shortly after, but I'll never forget that night, and I know that whatever it was, it's still out there, waiting in the fog. After that night, my sleep was never the same. I would wake up drenched in sweat, flashes of that faceless figure etched into my mind. I knew I'd seen something that shouldn't exist. Every night, the memory grew sharper, the faded uniform, the hollow darkness in its face, and that hand, reaching, almost bleeding. I began asking around about the area, talking to other rangers and locals who'd been there longer, but everyone was either too afraid to say anything or didn't believe me. Well, all except for one guy an older ranger named Thomas. When I finally worked up the courage to mention what I'd seen, he went pale. Years back, we lost ranger out there, Thomas said in a low voice. Name was Dan, disappeared on a foggy night. Just like you described, they found his truck near the edge of the park, engine still running, headlights pointed straight down an empty trail, but they never found him. Thomas leaned in closer, glancing around as if the trees had ears. Locals say he never left, they call him the lost stranger. People say he wanders the park, trying to find his way back. But to Broken Bar there's nothing left of him anymore, just the shell of a man forever lost in the woods. I felt a chill run down my spine. I wasn't the only one who'd seen him. Over the next few months, I tried to bury the memory. I took extra shifts during the day, avoided the night patrols, but the park was relentless. Every now and then, I'd catch glimpses out of the corner of my eye, a shadow at the edge of the tree line, a figure standing on a distant hill, always disappearing when I looked straight at it. One night, I got a call over the radio. A group of hikers had wandered off trail and hadn't returned. The sun was already setting, and I knew I'd have to go out there in the dark. My heart sank as I grabbed my gear, knowing I might have to face whatever was out there again. The fog was thicker than usual, blanketing the forest in a muffled silence. The trees seemed to lean closer, closing in around me as I followed the tracks. I found myself looking over my shoulder constantly half expecting to see that faceless figure watching me from the shadows. After what felt like hours, I found the hikers. They were huddled together, pale and shivering, barely able to speak. I tried to comfort them, but one of them grabbed my arm, eyes wide with terror. There was some in a broken bar in the fog, she whispered. He just stood there, watching us. 
boat to Broken Bar but he had no face. I felt the blood drain from my own face. I led them back as fast as I could, and when we finally reached safety, I reported what they said. My supervisor shrugged it off as fear and exhaustion, but I knew better. The next night, as I sat in my cabin, I heard something outside my window, a faint, shuffling sound, followed by a soft tap 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 on the glass. I froze, my blood turning to ice. Slowly, I turned toward the window, there, barely visible through the foggy glass, was a hand, pressed against the pane, and beyond it, the shadowy outline of a figure, hollow eyes staring back at me. The hand slowly slid down the window, leaving a trail of condensation before the figure disappeared into the fog once again. I didn't sleep that night, and I haven't.